Hello, everybody. Going live for another episode of uh, Demo Day with Splat or Demo Day with Brett. I'm Brett Taylor. I have been working on Super Algos. If you haven't been watching these, I've been working on Super Algos for, I don't know, nine months, a year about. And, um,. I'm trying to work on getting DEX, Distributed Exchange Trading, Exchange Trading into Super Algos. Excuse me while I open up my beer. Um, been pretty fun for me, learning a bunch of new stuff that I haven't dealt with before. And learning about crypto blockchain development. Um, the beer introduction tonight. I'm drinking a Tired Hands. Uh, Milk Stave DDH IPA with Galaxy and Vic Secret. It's um, very, very good. It's an IPA, but it's fermented in oak barrels, and it is delicious. A little bit on the uh, sour side, which I enjoy. So, here's. Did I show everybody the can? I think I did. May not have gotten. Oh yeah, I think I did this a couple streams ago, and it came out really cool because the label is green and the uh, chroma key messing everything up. Oh, I left my tweet deck up. Oh well. Um. So yeah, talking about pancake swap. Um, getting Dex trading into Super Algos. Um, so I made this bot as a learning ground, playground for trying to figure out um how all these functions work, how you actually connect to a distributed exchange and swap tokens and I want to make a couple tweaks to it that um, one of the things I'll zoom in here a little bit um, one of the things that I don't like about the way it runs right now and before I get into super algos I would want to instead of using this amount out minimum value i want to get a precise value for exactly how much uh how many tokens we exchange for so you can see i have our return being the amount out minimum but that gets tricky and it's not exact because it takes the quoted uh, exchange rate essentially and then applies slippage to it and so you get an amount out minimum um, that you may probably get more for than more than and uh, I couldn't find in the transaction here this TX how to get the exact amount that was actually traded I think when you get the receipt, you get several log messages. And the actual value gets buried in one of those log messages. And I think that's what I need to dig through. And at one point, I was trying to do that. And then I said, nah, let's just make it simple. Get this amount out min as... Um, a close enough value to at least get this running and tested. And um, now I want to come back to it and, and actually figure it out. Um, and really that's the only thing that kind of bothers me right now about this. So, um, a couple of things that I did see are... Um, let me see if I can get these links opened up. Um, 
So I found this issue or discussion that was open. And this leads me to believe that I do need to parse the logs and then get the amount out one and amount out zero. Amount zero out, amount one out. <clears throat> Um, and I think some of these comments down here allude to that as well. I'm going to try and get back into this and where do they have, so on their swap interface, Event swap. Log. So pancake swap is a fork of Uniswap. If you were not aware of that before. Um, and so they essentially work the same, but PancakeSwap is on Binance Smart Chain, which is essentially a fork of Ethereum. So let's see if we can add this in. Let me, I have the wrong code directory open. Open this up. Right. Excuse me. So, let's see, they get swap event topic ID. Hmm. Utils new I think. Um another thing that I was looking into is that there is a, a Uniswap SDK and subsequently a pancake swap SDK. And I was thinking that those might make it easier to get the actual values. Um, oh, Robbie or Roby. Hello, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And Shilkwam. Hope that's how I pronounce it. Uh, real quick for starters, I looked for pancake swap API, but couldn't really find one. Where did you find the endpoints? Is this just through ethers? Um, I found these endpoints basically by finding other repositories that had already started pancake swap bots. Um, but these are all through, let me open up the env template. Um, Basically just searching for uh, BSC nodes for Binance. Um, and this was one of the official uh, JSON RPC endpoints 
that came up in a Google search and it's in their docs. Um, and then to interact with PancakeSwap, you use their contract addresses because you essentially send coins to them, they swap it, and then send coins back to where they need to go, back to you, essentially. And yeah, all of this is basically through the ethers.js. Um, so you create a, a router, a factory object, and if you go and look at the, what is it, docs.pancakeswap, and here's one of the pages I was looking at, um, they talk about setting up the factory and what methods essentially there are, or functions, um, and then what, what the router does. And you can see it's based on Uniswap v2. Um, and they have documentation for these write functions, swap exact e or swap eth for exact tokens. Eth in this case is BNB, um, which is the native coin of the BSC. Uh, Binance Smart Chain. And then if we wanted to do... Oh, this was another thing I wanted to work on. Uh, testing these swap exact tokens for tokens. Um, functions. So that if people wanted to trade BTC for SA. Or... Um, what's another one? BUSD, I think, is the other liquidity pool that we have set up at the moment. Um, they would use this function to swap exact tokens for tokens. And then it would just be um, created with a, a different um, um, what's where, where am I? Where? Sorry. Got confused here. Um, It would just swap out these functions here and not show the code. Zoom in a little. I do to zoom in. Equal. There. Looks pretty good. Um so in there um, and the route would be different or the path shoot sorry just started Moving things around, my uh, stream set up, and I didn't mean to. Lost my chat box for a second. Just wanted to double check that nobody was trying to say anything. Um. So I guess the one thing I want to look into is in this discussion person says that you need to get a swap ID Um, that's going in there, and then the last swap event. Uh, 
Um, I guess. I feel like somewhere. Ah, okay. Take the transaction, get transaction receipt. I feel like I did this before. Okay. So coming out of our buy action. I want to get the receipt dot transaction hash. Let, so I think I want like, let, um, logs equal I think provider is what I have. Yeah. Um, another thing that I noticed is that putting in the to address recipient is not needed because once you create your wallet, wallet from your mnemonic, you can then wallet.address and use that. Um, so I don't even use the factory, so I don't even need that. The ERC, Ether's contract. I think that was another thing that I didn't need. Simplify this code a little bit. Get rid of some smells. Um, take out the recipient. Uh, that's my understanding of it. So it's more like sending coin somewhere than doing something like putting in a market order. That's my understanding just by, let me do this, bscscan.com. And let's look at Super Algos. And let's find a swap here. Let's look at, um... Let me see if there's another one. I think some of these. Yeah. So you can see these are all contract addresses. Some of them have special names like Pancake Swap. But we're starting here. And then we go to this address and you get wrap BNB. At least this is my interpretation of this. I think it's right. Um, somebody correct me if it's wrong. Um, and then you go from the wrap BNB to pancake swap B2 BTCB SA or Binance peg BTCB token. And then you go from BTCB to SA50, which is the main token address, I believe. Um, or like the, the imported token address. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, so that's where you get the SA, and then it looks like it trades again back to wrap BNB, which is a little bit strange. Like immediately changing right back.
Um, so you're basically just moving coins from contract to contract. And then it ends up in, back in your, in your wallet, your wallet address, which is a contract. Um, and so that's why all this stuff is pseudo anonymous and not entirely anonymous. Um, so let's jump back in here. Um, if I cleaned up a little bit, got rid of the, um, uh, receiver, because we don't need your address in here, because that's always the same. Hey, Cake Swap Factory, we got rid of, because we don't need the factory. And then I got rid of a, um, another block of code that we didn't need. That was left over. Um, so anyway, let's see. I want to, now I want to try and get off the logs. Do I need the receipt.hash? Which I hope Yeah, it just needs a transaction hash. And then this guy uh, So let's see this. And then let's output and let oh. and then we and I'll I'll walk through this. Let me um word wrap. And I think that this does make sense. So we get all the logs out of the transaction. We take the last event out of the logs. We then decode the data because it's a UN256. And then use non zero value if amount zero out is zero, use amount one out, otherwise, use amount zero out. And I'm going to get rid of these semicolons because we don't need them, and keeps it all the same. And let me go back to the Binance in browser to show you right here on this so if we look at the logs this is the event log it says to take the very last one if amount out Uh, where was it? If amount zero out is zero, amount zero out, then use amount one out. If amount otherwise, use amount zero out. So in this case, amount zero out is not zero. We would get we would use this amount, and then convert that. Oh, that so that means I need to convert that into human readable 
Um, how was I doing that? Go back to the code here. So I is my cell format ethers. Oh, I did. Wait, I was doing that format ethers. Receive tokens. Um, should turn this into a function, but I don't really want to. Because I'm going to do the exact same thing in the cell action. And I'm going to return my receive tokens. <clears throat> and that should give me the amounts. And it should look like this, essentially. That to that. Oh. Sorry. So I was saying it should look like this. Essentially without the... Very end. Um, so, oh, one thing I wanted to do. Don't need the pancake swap factory. Um, sorry. I am setting up my event, uh, environment variables uh, off screen here so that nobody can see my super secret things. Um, but what I want to do now excuse me. Um, open, change back to our code, um, now I want to try it, so I want to open up a new terminal. Um, and I want to node bot. Oh, I think I forgot. Oh. Um. This is going to be... I guess wallet dot address. Um. What else did I need to change? I think that's it. Um, the other thing I was looking at 
is I check my balance of BNB, but I'd never get the SA balance. And I was talking with Carl Ozed earlier. And he found that he can get the SA balance balance. Um by creating a new a contract config to purchase, which is SA in our case. And our account. And then he was able to get the um Oh, and then I'm going to format it. There's... On this, I say human. They balance. Um, there is a way to get the symbol also. That's another thing that I need to look into. Um, another time, I guess. But um, and right now I'm just going to hard code it as SA. And that should show me how much SA I have in my wallet. And I think that's it. I think that's all that I wanted to add. Uh, Flogger. Logo Rupanda. That's how I'm going to pronounce that. Um, Super Algos, if you are unaware... And thanks for joining. Is a trading bot for cryptocurrencies. Um, it's free and open source. Has a GitHub page. Has a regular website. Telegram groups. Uh, go with flow. Nice. Um, but it lets you set up your own algorithm or use one that is freely available on the internet to buy and sell cryptocurrency and potentially make a profit. Um, works with a bunch of different exchanges. Right now, it only uses um, central exchanges like Binance and Coinbase and a bunch of others. And I'm trying to put in the ability for it to use distributed exchanges like PancakeSwap or Uniswap to trade coins um, straight from your wallet, you know. Um, so if you have any other questions, you can check out the GitHub page 
github.com slash superalgos. Um, I'll go to the main website here. Um, <clears throat> right now it is only spot trading. Um, the, there is a library behind the scenes that does the majority or gives the majority of the support, excuse me, for the, excuse me, for the, um, the trading abilities and the interface for all the different exchanges. And uh, I believe that has futures and um, some other types of trading in it. And I can't, why am I blanking on the name of it right now? Um, CCXT. Um, this is the library that SuperAlgos uses right now. Um, so any of the exchanges that you see supported by this library potentially are um, supported by SuperAlgos itself. And a lot of these have more testing than others. Um, but I know Binance is the most heavily tested. Um, recently, um, Ascendex was essentially certified by SuperAlgos. We made a, a deal with them. Um, any of any users of SuperAlgos who trade with them get a little bit of a discount, say with OKX, um, on the fees. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. Um, I myself am currently using it on Binance, um, Kraken, and Coinbase Pro. Coinbase Pro. Um, and I know that there's a lot of other people that use other, um, exchanges like KuCoin. I've seen come up a lot in discussions. Um, I think there were some others that people use like Bit, Bitrex, BitRx, Bitrex. It was on here somewhere. I feel like I passed over it. There. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, ha I may not get to it today, but since you're here and asking questions, I guess they have some trading plan example. Yep, they do. Um, so if you go to demo.superalgos.org <clears throat> without, oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, man, I haven't loaded this up in a while. I need to fix that. Um. Uh, anyway, never mind. All right, I gotta fix why the demo site's down. Um, but if you download the code from, um, GitHub, it's only a couple of extra steps, and then you can get it running yourself, and, um, check it out. There's, uh, a bunch of tutorials. Um, I really don't have that saved. Um, anyway, uh, there are some getting started tutorials. All the documentation is right in the, the application itself. Um, there is a project that somebody will pick up eventually to export all the documentation and get it up on the web so it can be accessed. Cheers. Thank you for the follow. Um, and, um, yeah, best way to get started is to just start going through. This is a video, a little screen cap of the getting started tutorial. So it's pretty comprehensive. I definitely went through it several times. <clears throat> I didn't know anything about trading when I started using this. I fell into it. Because I want, I decided that I was going to take on a coding project, and um, oh, thanks. Yeah, welcome. Come back 
as often as you want. Um, I, I also post these videos up on YouTube if you want to catch any of the, uh, the back sessions. Um, there's a couple where I walk through the getting started tutorial. Um, and definitely if you're going to start using it or are interested in getting involved, very first thing, create your governance profile. And you will get some tokens for creating your profile. And then you can learn, uh, earn more by just helping out and, you know, supporting people, asking questions. Um, if you create any new strategies, there's a bunch of data scientists working on it, creating new strategies all the time, putting in new um, indicators and things like that. <clears throat> so pretty much wherever, if you want to help out, there's tons of different ways that you can help out. Um, and one of the reasons why I started doing these videos was I found it interesting. I was learning a lot and I wanted to help other people, um, not stumble through it like I have and come out with a, a better outcome and not take so long to onboard them into the program like it, like it took me. Um, but anyway, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. <clears throat> um, and so that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about trading the Super Algos token is that that is the governance token of the project. So essentially when you contribute to the project, you get paid in the token and then you can trade it right now only on PancakeSwap. Um, so kind of an eat your own dog food thing. I'm trying to make Super Algos itself be able to trade its own token on PancakeSwap. Um, I guess I could get a little bit more since we do have somebody new who seems interested. Um, I can load up, let's see. Um, since I couldn't get the demo website up and running. Uh, let me just move platform. Um, sure. Yeah. Good. Take your time, go over the videos. Um, but I did want to just get this up and running real quick to show you what the interface looks like. And I think there's another person wa watching who wanted me to go over something in the actual platform itself too. Um, before I run out of time, because I am definitely getting pretty sleepy, my kids have been beating me up uh, over the last couple of days. Um, let me go into the Getting Started Tutorials workspace here. And so this is what you're welcome with when you first start up the, the project. And if you just click next, keep going through it, you'll get through this pretty awesome tutorial. Um, that hopefully if you know trading terms and what's going on, it may make a lot more sense to you than it did to me. But I basically had to learn trading from scratch. Um, but anyway get to the question that I was asked earlier also, since I have the UI up. Um, excuse me. Um, there was a person, uh, sh I think it's Shield Guam. I think it's the same person. I remember this. Um, Niobe. Um, was having issues 
with tasks with backtesting tasks not running. And I was going to just show real quick what happens to me that I've had happen frequently when I'm trying to run a backtesting session. If I click on the backtesting session first, okay, that's nice. It didn't, it used to not do this, but it would actually try to send the run command. You have to hit this task um, first, have it run. And I found that if, see how it took several seconds for this text to come up, the waiting five seconds for backtesting to run. If I click on the play button before that, I get into a weird situation and then I can't really click on anything. It doesn't really time out. Um, so what I've kind of taught myself to do is to really wait until I see this text. And then I know I can now hit run on the backtesting session. And so I have to, I really wait for these state changes to appear. And this probably won't run because I don't have, um, or maybe I do have data downloaded. I don't think I do. Oh yeah. Okay. So in the console, it's saying that it's waiting for, um, Oh, I guess, never mind. I guess I did have the data. I thought I was going to say that it was waiting for um, the data mining. Um, so anyway, that's, that's one tip, is when you click on the task, wait for the text to pop up saying that it's waiting for the actual session to start, and then run your session. Um... Okay, so you think that's it, that you're clicking them too quick? Um, and so once you get into this bad state, the only way that I've found to get out of it is to refresh. Refresh the page, reload everything, um, and then as soon as you see that it's waiting for backtesting to start, then click Run on the backtesting node. Uh, and that should give you better outcomes. So again, run on the task, wait. Now that we see our yellow text, click run. And this will go. Um... Okay, so every, sometimes you restart the server has that issue. Um, so I, th I, I, I don't know, I guess without seeing the workspace or seeing you do it, um, I'm not sure exactly how else to reproduce what you're running into. Uh, I think that trying to click these too quickly is the only time that I've ever had that issue myself and refreshing the page um, fixed it for me. Um, so yeah, with the last few minutes here, I'm gonna try and close this out if there aren't any other questions and try and get this code running. Um, so what did I do? I wanted the show my balance of essay. I wanted to see if I could get the actual received tokens output. So there, so I got my essay balance. Nice, that worked. 
now we have to wait for the Binance chain to catch up with our sale or buy. And then swap log slice is not a function. Nice. Okay. Okay, um, uh, let me, well, let me just add in a stop here. And open up, nope. Of script debug terminal. And we got here at my transaction hash. I do have swap logs. Why is slice? Promise the un ending. So that's all this is, is a promise. I get transaction receipt. So I wonder if this is in the ether. And in here, I should not wait here. I definitely looked at this. Oh, okay, so I need an await. So let's see if my await makes that better. Oh. Oh dear. Edit in an await on my swap logs. There. Okay. I'm still saying slice is not an option. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Um, look this up. Array. Oh, okay. So it's not a, not an array. Wait, this, this is the exact same as the receipt. So 
but don't I just want swap logs would equal receipt dot logs. So I show you I deleted the swap logs thing and receipt.logs could be the swap event that I'm looking for. So that worked. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So, I think that worked. Um, I want to format ethers, the received tokens. Um, excuse me. Uh, so let's go this down here too. And that should look better. Do I console log my amount out min? Just to compare and run it. And I'll put a stop right before we return. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, so I, my, I needed to format that also. But you could see before we were trying to get 11. And we got 12.68. Let's see if that matches... Binance 
we click back to Super Algos, we have our transfers, and I got 12.68. That's cool. Because that is definitely me. My 0 0.001 for 12.68. And that's exactly what we got here. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Flo. You have a good night, too. Um, all right, so that seems to be working now. Um, so I can remove these debug logging. What's the other thing I wanted to do? I think that's it. Um, I don't need to... Kind of like having the receive tokens. Um. Uh, I think I need this in regular quotes. Not. How do I do this? Didn't I do this? Oh, I have it in tick marks there. Um, and I believe I want those. In tokens, oh, I've got this. I don't really want to put in the essay in the BNB, &B, but I'm going to, and I'm going to decrease. Oh, gee, I showed this code. Um. Logs. Yeah, I could definitely turn this into a function. I'm not going to do it right now, though, just because it's getting late and I think I've done everything that I wanted to do tonight um so let me swap back to my browser real quick I'm going to change my wait time let's do 10 seconds Go back to VS Code here, and don't need any stops. Save. I can actually get rid of the debugging terminal. Then I can node bot. I do have to buy value to sell value. 
logged also. Probably remove a little bit more of this debugging. And there you go. So I got took outputted my twelve point six eight. What happened here? No matching event. That doesn't look right. Maybe that is? No matching event. Pop a cache. Excuse me. So where did this actually die? 135? Where I was trying to parse the log. I think it just did it too quickly. I don't know, I'm confused. I think that what happened is... It went through too quickly and... BSC scan... Maybe it doesn't even have to do anything with BSC scan. It could already be on the blockchain. If it got to this point, tokens. All right, let's try it again.
Yeah, so by the time it gets there... We had the receipt, we had the logs. But then we go to parse it and we get an error. Topic hash, invalid argument, no matching event. Didn't I have last swap event? Um, I think I see what's, why. Let me go back here. Um, browser share. So if I open up the URL, what happened? What I wanted. So we do have the transaction. But I think here the problem is that the last log is not what we want. So minus two. Let's try this again. What I set was minus two here instead of minus one in the cell. Cell action. Uh, that's cool. So it gives you the interface there. Oh. So what I was just looking at that I just noticed is that you get the interface here under name. Event swap. So that's where... this utils interface and swap comes out. So we have our transaction receipt. We got our last event, well, second to last event. And now, we parsed it. Hey, that worked. So then we swap back our BNB. -B. 
Ta-da. Job done. All right, everybody. I think that's it. Let's, um... See, were there any... Info logs that we should delete? No, I think that works. Let's leave it like that for right now. Um, and then maybe if I get some time next week, I can put in um, um. Sorry, I can put in the swap token for tokens and um then we can then uh use the BTC and the BUSD pools to trade tokens. And then we can get this into super algos. Um that's obviously gonna be a much bigger bigger job. All right. That is it for me. Make this PR back to myself and merge it. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Um, so yeah, that's it for me for the night. Uh, hope everybody found this informative. Join up next time, ask me questions. I am totally cool with walking through random things in super algos otherwise i'll probably be trying to catch up on some of the things like coding up these distributed exchanges um that i haven't had time to do over the week and uh you can learn javascript node.js along with me and blockchain uh coding um Again, using Super Algos. Check us out on Telegram, Discord. Tomorrow I'm in there uh, answering questions as much as I can. And um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find Super Algos on Twitter, on Facebook, and um, Reddit. Come check us out in Reddit. I've been trying to get things posted there, keep that subreddit going and active. Um, so yeah, that's it. I think I've hit all the things. Everybody have a good night. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. And uh, I hope to see your Super Algos profiles soon. Get you on the flippy floppy.